So for today's lesson, we will be defining what a critic is. We'll also be distinguishing book versus article critic. And we'll also talk about the different steps in writing book or article critic and the essential skills that are needed whenever we engage in academic writing. The word critic is actually a French word that basically means a critical assessment. Now, critic in terms of reading and writing is basically described as having many different structures. However, the simplest structure that we often follow whenever we um, formulate critics or compose critics is a short summary of what you have just read. May it be a book or may it be an article. And then that short summary is followed by an evaluation your assessment of what you have just read. And um, part of writing a critic may include your own opinion as the writer or as the composer of the critic. Although it is usually associated with finding fault in some aspects of an article or a book, or maybe giving criticism in a negative sense, Writing a critic is actually um, something that also involves merit recognition and it helps us to enhance our understanding, therefore further inviting discussion and commentary on the, on the article or on the book itself. So it's not just basically you trying to point out all the negative aspects, all the negative things that you have seen on what you have just read, okay? May it be a book or an article. But um, it's not simply stating out all the negative parts of it, okay? But rather, you also try to um, identify the good parts. What are the stand are uh, the things that stood out the most okay so what are the things that you like best that is part or part of the process of um writing a critic now maybe some of you are curious as to why we are learning about writing a critic it is very important that we include this in our curricula especially if we have to or if we need to develop higher order thinking skills, okay? Writing a critic is not simply bound in the walls of language learning or even in reading and writing classes or in English classes. You, you write critics in, you could actually compose critics in many different forms, okay? Because um, writing a critic helps us to develop higher order thinking skills. Whenever we write critics, we don't just simply recall facts or basic concepts. We also analyze and evaluate. And then eventually, we can create something out of what we have just read, out of what we have just analyzed, our own analysis, our own evaluations. We can create something out of it. And those are, as you can see on your screens right now, on the pyramid that you can see, those top three are the highest order thinking skills that we could develop. Now, before we move forward, it is best that we define or distinguish the difference between a book and an article. If you were to describe a book, obviously it's, um, it's a piece of reading material that is um, bound, usually bound, containing a lot of pages so probably more than 50 pages and it's bound together it has a cover or maybe um a title page okay and they're put together to form one reading material okay so that's basically a book whereas an article is simply a type of reading material that is shorter than a book so it's also composed of multiple pages however more often than not, these pages are not bound together similar to us how we bind a book, okay? Now, an article also may contain um, not more than 50 pieces of or not more than 50 pages worth of reading. Now, let's go first to writing a book critic. A book critic is basically a type of literary criticism in which 
the content of the book itself and the style that was used by the author are all evaluated and analyzed. It can be a summary review, like what we have mentioned earlier, or maybe your own opinion on what you have just read from the book. Now, book reviews could be printed in magazines, periodicals, newspapers, websites, and it may serve different purposes. It could also contain a single paragraph or maybe as long as a substantial essay. Book critics may also be used to present an idea or display a type of learning. Now, what are the different steps in writing a book critic? The first thing that you have to do is, of course, to read the book itself. Okay, so you cannot write a book critic if you haven't read the book. And then after reading the book, you think about what you have just read. You try to ponder on its content carefully. The next step in writing a book critic is to begin your review with an appealing sentence. This is like similar to the hook in writing an essay. You try to pull the attention of your readers. The third one, of course, is do not forget to include the title of the book and its author. Whenever you write a book critic, it is essential that you state right away what was the title of the book you have just read and who wrote the book that you have just read. The next step in writing a book critic is the inclusion of important information about the book's author. It is not enough that you simply talk about the contents of the book. But in writing a book critic, you can also talk about who wrote the book. So in that way, you are trying to establish the authority of the author and trying to establish as well or formulate his or her credibility. So who is he or she to write or produce a book it, like that? Okay, so um, when you also write about the author, you research about the author as well. And in researching about the author, you get to know the author more. The next one is objectively evaluating the book by giving your honest reflections and thoughts about its message, content, merit, and style. If you didn't like it, then you write about it. But of course, um, as uh, an academic writer, it's not enough that you simply state that you don't like it. You also need to state the reasons why you didn't write like it in the first place. Similarly, when you like something about the book, you also explain why did you like it in the first place. Now, for someone to be called an effective book critic, they have to manifest or they have to showcase the following characteristics. The first one is an effective book critic reports what the book does. Okay, what was the purpose of the book? Was its purpose to entertain, to help its readers understand something? If you are an effective book critic, you would be able to identify that purpose and then write about that purpose as well on your output. The next one is that an effective book critic must also judge how well the author has done his or her job. Was the writer effective? Was the author able to relay the information that he or she wants to relay? So if you're an effective book critic, um, you're not biased in that sense. So take for example, if you are writing a book critic about your favorite author, and um, even if he or she was your favorite author, it's not enough that just because he or she is your favorite, you're going to be writing favorable things about that particular author. So you need to be unbiased towards your judgment as well. Next, whenever you write something about the book itself, Always make sure that you provide enough evidence to back it up or to support whatever you have written. And um, those pieces of evidence have to be from the book itself as well. Because when it's from the book as well, it means that it's a solid piece of evidence. It is an evidence that is strong enough to back up whatever you were trying to say about or even your ideas about the book you have just read. Now, like what I have mentioned as well earlier, an effective book critic must always be fair in his evaluation. 
personal prejudices should not come in the way of the book appraisal. Like what I have mentioned, if you believe, if you think that it's bad, then it's bad. If you think that it's not good enough, then it's not good enough. And if you think that it is the best, then you, you have to report that it is the best. But make sure that those judgments are um, not simply because you like the author or you like the pictures, you like the content, okay? Make sure that they are all unbiased and fair. Here are some guide questions that you can use whenever you are writing a book critic. First question is, what is the title of the book that you have read? You need to include details such as the publishing year, publishing house, etc. You can also talk about the author of the book. You may include details about the author, such as his or her career in life, some other works that he has done, and even other relevant achievements. Again, this would enable you to establish the author's credibility. Next is, what is the book all about? What is the story? You can provide a short summary of the book. You don't have to talk about all the events that happened in the book. You can simply state a summary or write a summary. Next one, what can you say about the author's writing and his or her techniques? So you try to evaluate how was the book written. Next, does it have any messages to its reader and was it relayed effectively? The next one is, as a reader, as a consumer of the book, of the story, what was your favorite part? You can also talk about other parts that are unique, interesting, or maybe significant to the story or the book itself. You can also point out things that are not simply bad, but you can also point out things that are very good about the book. Now, as a critic, you must also try to make recommendations. So who do you think should read the book? Aside from that, if there are other takeaways from the book or the story, you can also write about them. Now let's go to an article critic. An article critic is a simple analysis and commentary of an article or a text instead of an entire book. So if you are only trying to formulate an analysis or a commentary of um, a short piece of text or a chapter perhaps of a book, okay, we can refer to that one as an article critic. An article critic basically presents a critical assessment of the article's content and may offer agreement or disagreement about the ideas written in the article. More often than not, article critics are used to evaluate or are formulated to evaluate um, pieces of text that or articles that are controversial in nature or maybe um, texts that are argumentative or persuasive in nature. Some steps in writing an article critic. The first thing that you have to do is obviously to provide the reader with a brief review of what the article is all about. So again, it's a summary. The next is, state your opinion about the work. Do you agree or disagree? Do you like it or do you dislike whatever the author just stated? The third one is, you try to figure out whether it is effective, persuasive, or even noteworthy. Fourth, try to suggest whether the readers would appreciate it and find it useful. So would you want other people to read about it or do you think it's not, it's not good enough to be read by other people? So try to evaluate on that as well. Now, when we engage in academic writing, we actually try to develop certain skills. And these skills are very essential because it helps us compose academic texts better. These skills are summarizing and paraphrasing. Summarizing is basically... Uh, a skill where at, wherein we reduce a text to its main points and its most important ideas. So basically, a long text, we are trying to, when we summarize a long text, we try to keep it short. We try to make things short. Or we also try to make it or keep it brief for our readers. When we paraphrase, this is a type of skill in academic writing wherein we are trying to put the text into our own 
words. So the idea is still there. However, we are changing the words that we are using to relay those ideas. Here are some tips in summarizing. The first tip is always scan the text first. Try to locate topic sentences and highlight the main points as you read. And then after you read, try to reread the text and make separate notes of the main points. Because basically in summarizing, we are only after the main ideas. So those main ideas, when put together, they can form already a summary of the longer text. Some other tips in paraphrasing. In paraphrasing, you must review your summary notes first. You can also rewrite them in your own words and in complete sentences. Whenever you paraphrase, try to use reporting verbs and phrases. And of course, fourth one, if you're finding it difficult to paraphrase and there are certain words that you cannot find synonyms for or certain ideas that you cannot simply change into your own words, then you can utilize the use of quotation marks to avoid, obviously, plagiarism. Here are my sources and references. Thank you for listening.